From the University of North Dakota, this is Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. Hello and welcome to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. I'm Tim Hennessy. Well, it was broom time at the Ralph against St. Cloud State, the first home sweep of the season. Friday, a great battle for a 3-1 Sioux win. Saturday, kudos to the wardrobe folks. Wearing black, the Sioux chalk up another win, 6-2. Got a full lineup for you today. He may be the most wired in player on the Sioux roster. You can follow him on Twitter, and he once blogged from the World Junior A Challenge for USA Hockey. And is there a better hockey name going than Ben Blood? We'll hear from the Sioux Junior in our player profile. And it's the dream of just about all youth hockey players, having your name called in the first round of the National Hockey League draft. We'll visit with the most recent first rounders on the Sioux team. Stick around, Coach Hackstall is going to give us his take on two big wins against St. Cloud State. But before we talk to the coach, we have a question for you. Who did UND play in their last game at the Old Barn? The answer and more when we come back. You're watching Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey is sponsored by Verizon, the University of North Dakota, Shields, Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Baller Insurance, and Dahlstrom Motors. Fighting Sioux Men's Basketball takes on Mayville State Tuesday, December 14th at the Betty Ingolstead Sioux Center. The action starts at 7 p.m. Get your tickets now. We are North Dakota. Now buy a Samsung Intensity 2 for $29.99 and get one free. Or buy a BlackBerry Curve 3G for $49.99 and get one free. So overall, this is going to have a $300 million impact. North Dakota Spirit, the campaign for the University of North Dakota. Join us. It's a place to do the pop shop, put your shopping into overdrive. A great place to wine and dine, make a chance for a jumping jive. Yeah, it's great, a great port, a great destination. Before the break, we asked you, who did the Sioux play in their last game at the Old Barn? The answer is, everybody's favorite opponent, it was the University of Minnesota. February 22nd, 1972, Sioux lost that one 5-2. I think they got robbed by the refs in that one. Welcome back to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. I'm Tim Hennessy with head coach Dave Hackstall on board again. Hack, congratulations. Great sweep over the weekend at St. Cloud State. Good, uh, good sweep, great points, um, good weekend, good way to end it going into Christmas uh, in, our, in our home WCHA uh, schedule. Boy, it's been, uh, it's been tough. I think you've played consistent. We've talked about it, how consistently your team has played all season long, really since the main series, and to uh, see themselves uh, reap some of the benefits of playing like that finally, is, it was really, a, really fun to do. Yeah, it? especially in that first period on Saturday night. We've had a lot of good first periods at home. Uh, it's awful nice to be able to uh, reap some of the rewards out of it. Starts off Che Genoway, Aaron Marvin, uh, captains of the respective teams, and they shake hands before the game. And obviously, uh, that's in the that's in the tail lights. But I think to your team, maybe in the tail lights somewhat, but still on the top of their minds a little bit when they take the ice against St. Cloud. Don't you think? Well, it's absolutely. It's still uh, it's still within everybody's minds. Mm -hmm. But you know, we said it coming in, and it wasn't. You know, it just wasn't for media purposes. We needed to focus on, and we did focus on, the most important thing, and that's going out and playing well and finding a way to get four points at home. Seniors Fratt and Malone and Trupp uh, really took over uh, offensively for your team, for sure. This is just a pretty goal. In. Yeah, I thought in, in almost, you know, really all phases of the game up front for us, those guys really led the way. Um, they did a great job, both ends of the rink, and obviously scoring some big goals here. Second goal, the game-winning goal, but 
Brad Malone on Friday night uh, after a great save by uh, Aaron Dell was a real key play. They reviewed that and reviewed that and reviewed that and finally <laughs> found out that it, it definitely did go in. Yeah. It, and also, you know, we talked about reaping the rewards. Brad Malone has played very well, played very strong, and finally to get a couple of goals was nice to see, wasn't it? Yeah, it was nice to see him get a couple goals. I thought he found another gear this weekend. <laughs> I thought he found another level of play uh, and, and really another level of consistency. And, you know, he's, uh, he's finally healthy, he's feeling good, and it uh, showed in his play this weekend. Sometimes I think it's a matter of telling he's got to be reminded how good he can be. Well, I think, you know, it's something that you grow into with maturity as a player, um, and uh, there's no question. You know, Brad has had good, steady progress his entire three and a half years here, and it was another step forward for him this past weekend. Saturday night, you had the uh, Maytag repairman come out to do the uh, national anthem for you. I think that was your request. <laughs> uh, it, it was. I, I like the suit. <laughs> I, I got to find out where to get one of those. You started out and you and you donned the black jerseys for only the second time at home, uh, coach. And I think a lot of people want to know how do you determine when you put those things on? Well, there's no there's no formula for it. It's uh, you know it, it's uh, we've worn them at different times on the road. Obviously, this is the first time at home, but uh, we've had good success within them. But you know, as I said after the game Saturday, it's the guys wearing the jerseys. It's not the jerseys. So, uh, like I said, there's no set formula, Tim. It's just uh, uh, it's a feeling on game day when we make that decision. Bottom line, gut feel. That's what it is. And the guys came out and uh, they came up flying, didn't they? Well, the guys knew how important that, that uh, two points was on Saturday night. and They came out flying. Like I said, we've had some other pretty good first periods where uh, we put a lot of pucks on net and dominated the period, but we haven't had uh, the goals to show for it. So it was real nice to see us. I think we went to the net a little harder. We got more bodies to the net and uh, it, it really paid off for us. Well, I think what was interesting as well, or what was a good thing for your team, obviously, is you got some guys, Derek LaPointe and, uh, and Dave's Brent Davidson and Mario Lemieux, all scoring goals who hadn't scored a goal yet. Was that Mario Le Lemieux or Lamoureux? Lamoureux. Uh, well, he looked like, <laughs> he I looked called him like, Lemieux at looked, one point when he, he looked like, by. Yeah, yes, he, he looked like Lemieux a couple <laughs> of times this weekend. Uh, and it was real nice to see him get his first. Obviously, he's had some great chances. He's played very well. So to see him get uh, get the insurance marker, the sixth goal was uh, was important. And then, of course, the stick salute, which you've been uh, I know the players have been looking forward to doing. There's another thing. A lot of teams will do that regardless on Saturday night, win or lose. You guys only do it when you take a couple, don't you? Well, and that's that's been tradition here, yeah. and that's not a disrespect to our fans at all. We night in and night out, we know how important they are. But it's nice to celebrate a win. Uh, with the fans, and that's really the way I, I look at it. I know uh, everybody uh, everybody comes to the rink on Saturday night uh, and Friday night looking for and expecting a win. We want to celebrate that win with them when we have that opportunity. And just shy of 12,000 people there. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, night in and night out is just amazing. The, uh, the atmosphere in that building and uh, the people that uh, come from near and far um, we say it all the time. But we've got the best college hockey fans uh, anywhere, probably the best fans in hockey. And uh, you know what? We want to go out and play hard for him, Tim. The sweep meant a lot. You see Trepper give me this one. A <laughs> little extra for the senior. Yeah, he liked it. The senior certainly had a big weekend, no doubt. Coming up, we're starting to see some separation from the top to the bottom in the new 12-team WCHA. And being selected in the first round of the NHL draft is great for bragging rights, but there's more than a little pressure that goes with it, as you'll see in our feature with the latest first rounders at UND. That's coming up next. Tickets are still available for many of the exciting University of North Dakota Fighting Sioux home hockey games at the REL. Support your team and get your tickets now. We are North Dakota! The play is under review. Hey, take a look at this. This online course is awesome. Yeah, I gotta see that again. <laughs> I've been snowboarding for 16, 17 years. I just enjoy going out, getting a trick and just getting it dialed so you can just stop it every time. You'll have days where everything is just clicking and you're able to just land everything you try. I don't even like stopping to eat. When you're riding and everything's going well, you feel invincible. Just seeing me out on the hill and riding and just having a good time, they're gonna come in here and know that I know what I'm talking about. It makes a big difference with the customers. 
I'm Wade Fisher from Shields. Fighting two men's basketball team hosts the South Dakota School of Mines Thursday, December 30th at the Betty. Tip-off is set for 7 p.m. Get your tickets today. We are North Dakota. The University of North Dakota is a place where students thrive, where graduates succeed, where ideas are born, and research is driven by imagination. Experience our expertise. Creative, innovative, entrepreneurial, spirited. This is the University of North Dakota. Every year, the NHL scouts look at thousands of players. Every year, a select few young men rise to the top. A couple of Fighting Sioux freshmen have intimate knowledge of the NHL draft process. It's just a group of guys playing a game they love. But these young skaters are the Fighting Sioux of North Dakota, playing a pickup game when the stands are empty. And a couple of the guys in this group they're skating with a little extra weight on their shoulders. I was trying not to think about that stuff too much and just go back to the roots. It's a little scary, you know, there's some big guys and uh, you step into a new parts and you're the youngest guy. Coaches know that high expectations can weigh on a player. In the end, performance is what counts. It's going to still be going to be a big jump for them. They're, they're going to be great players, but uh, this first year, you know, they're young guys coming right out of uh, high school. Well, it's a good feeling when you get a commitment from a top player. There's no question about it. Uh, very exciting. It, you know, kind of energizes you for the future. Energy that is to be expected from players with great potential. At least that's what a couple of teams in the NHL think. Both Brock and Derek are chosen. Yeah, they kind of think that it, uh, it's you're, it's made now and you kind of stop. But uh, it's it's the exact opposite. You still got to work. I know a lot of guys uh, that go first round sometimes sometimes don't even make it. Brock and Derek were both picked in the first round of the NHL draft. The draft is a complicated process that ensures top players from around the world are distributed evenly to the pro teams that need them the most. First round picks usually have a much better chance of making a career out of pucks and penalty minutes. You know, I think our track record as far as our success, not only of getting a lot of first rounders, but how many are currently in NHL, is very attractive to young people that are in that category now looking at different one, schools. Two on oh. All right, so F1. Both of the players admit the experience is quite a whirlwind. It all started when they heard their name called. That feeling waiting, it's, it's probably one of the worst feelings in the world. But I don't know, I guess it's a good kind of feeling to have. And the perks. Uh, we got a couple hats uh, from the Islanders right away. So that was, uh, that was pretty neat, gave them a couple friends. The season is underway, and the two players have but one wish for Sioux fans. Excited to go out there and do everything I can out in front of them, and hopefully uh, they enjoy it. Heard a lot about them. I mean, heard the crazy, crazy fans, and I'm just excited to hopefully play in front of them. Brock Nelson and Derek Forbert are two young men with a lot of ice ahead of them. Forbert and Nelson are the fifth and sixth Sioux to be selected in the first round under Coach Hackstall. Jonathan Taves, Joe Finley, T.J. Oshie, Brian Lee came before them. Stay with us. We'll check out the WCHA standings. Also, we'll show you how a big save can lead to a big goal and how the Sioux got down and dirty against St. Cloud State. We'll break down a few highlights when we come back. This is a place where innovation abounds, a place where dreams come true, a place where creativity is a way of life, a place that fires our soul. Join us for the North Dakota Spirit Campaign. Together, we will shape the future of UND and North Dakota.
The University of North Dakota is a place where students thrive, where they learn from leading experts, share discoveries and create knowledge. Experience our expertise. Creative, innovative, entrepreneurial, spirited. This is the University of North Dakota. Dreams are forged. Character is tested. Teams are united. Champions win here. Watch the crowning of a new NCAA Men's Frozen Four champion April 7th and 9th on ESPN and ESPN2 in high definition. For information, visit NCAA.com slash Frozen Four. Welcome back to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. I'm Tim Hennessy with head coach Dave Haxtell. We saw the flip-flop going around there. We kind of liked that uh, Sioux <laughs> logo going ahead of the Denver logo, didn't we? Well, it's early on, but uh, we're, getting, we're getting towards the halfway mark of, of the WCHA season, and um, every point is critical. So we want to we wanna try to inch our way to the top of that standings as, uh, as uh, much and as quickly as we possibly can. 12-team league uh, right now, a pretty good spot in the top six, obviously. Uh, you're going uh, this coming weekend against the Manquette. There's a lot of teams that are, there's a big bunch in the middle there, and it's going to be a, a race right down to the end. Isn't it? Well, there's a big bunch in the middle, but there's also, uh, it's also not a, you know, a, a great gap between uh, the top and the middle and, and the bottom of that middle pack. So it's, uh, every point is critical, and real tough series coming up this weekend in Mankato. Coach, you talk about greasy goals and big saves and a lot of things that make a difference in a, in a hockey game. And I think we saw a little uh, or a lot of both of those uh, this past weekend against St. Cloud State. Let's take a look at some of the, uh, the highlights from uh, this past weekend, including this pass. Number one, you'll say there's no way that guy should have been behind your defenseman, but regardless. Well, the, the pass shouldn't have, uh, you know, got in behind our D, but we actually make the mistake about 180 feet from our net with our, uh, you know, our first four checker. Uh, in his position, but great save by Aaron Dell. Uh, saves like this lead to opportunities to score goals like this right here. So, real key save, save by Aaron that uh, gave us this opportunity uh, by the Brad Malone line. Yeah, because you never know. He doesn't make uh, if Aaron Dell doesn't make that save. Uh, who knows what kind of momentum that uh, that gives St. Cloud State? No question. It changed the entire momentum of the game. At a, in a 1-1 game, a tight hockey game. Uh, save like that really energizes your bench and allows you to go out and uh, and uh, make plays like Brad made. And you talk about uh, the dirty, greasy, grimy goals in front of the net that your team had to start getting some, and that's just a matter of getting traffic there. And you certainly had it on Saturday night, didn't you? Well, you know, each one of these goals you see, uh, St. Cloud has two, three, and four players in the area. You've got to get numbers there. You've got to get the puck there. Uh, and you've got to get numbers into that area to score goals. So we really tried to make a point of, uh, of improving uh, what we're doing and going to the net, and it really paid off for us on Saturday night. And when you get a guy like Matt Fratton scoring a goal and knocking down a guy after that, then maybe you get a little more room in there. Huh? Well, that's, that's the best of both worlds, I <laughs> yeah, guess. Yeah, isn't it? Uh, you know, that was obviously an incidental play, but uh, uh, the important part is putting the puck in the net. Great stick salute, great way to end the weekend. Is it a mental thing uh, for people, uh, for players to be able to get in front of that? We know there's a several guys on your team, uh, I think leading, led by Brad Malone, that do it. But is it kind of a mental mindset that they have to, uh, they have to come up with? Yeah, I think it's habits. I think it's, uh, you have to form the habit of, of driving your feet, moving your feet, not planting your feet when you go into the offensive zone. You know, it's, uh, yeah, some people have the mentality just naturally of going to that tough area. Uh, but, you know, for everybody, it's a habit of putting yourself in that position and not staying out on the perimeter. Well, you got, like you say, they're kind of greasy. You got to get in there and muck it up, no doubt. Well, you do. There was a lot of good mucking on Saturday night. A broken leg at Shattuck St. Mary's could only slow this big guy down for a little while. He's Sioux Junior defenseman Ben Blood, and he's coming up on our player profile. We'll get to that, but first a look back in our Fighting Sioux history. He's another one of those good old Alberta boys who found their way to the University of North Dakota to play hockey. His son decided to follow his dad's lead and arrived at UND several years later. But where is Bob Duncan now? We'll have the answer and more when we come back. The University of North Dakota is a place where students thrive, 
where they learn from leading experts, share in discoveries and create knowledge. Experience our expertise. Creative, innovative, entrepreneurial, spirited. This is the University of North Dakota. So overall, this is going to have a $300 million impact. North Dakota Spirit, the campaign for the University of North Dakota. Join us. As summer is left behind, fall brings new adventures. Make them better with a vehicle from Dahlstrom Motors. Whatever adventures come your way, Dahlstrom can make the difference in making your life a smooth ride. you got to be prepared out there. The conditions can be very demanding. It's not easy heading out in the winter. You're facing altitude, wind, snow, and changes in temperature. All your layers and accessories have to work together. You need gear that's up to the challenge. But you need styles that are up to date. Experience of training can make all the difference. My training is really helpful to the customers. I'm Zach Angus. And I'm Melissa Langseth. And we're experts in cold weather gear at Shields. The answer to our where are they now question, Bob Duncan is a retired firefighter in Calgary. He used to do remember, double, triple shifts with the department so he could take some time off to make the weekends and watch Sun Ryan play at UND. Well, his penalty minutes compared to junior hockey are down, but his value to the Sioux hockey team is on the rise. Here's junior D-man Ben Blund. With North Dakota defenseman Ben Blood. Ben, let's talk about life in Plymouth, Minnesota, huh? It all started there, didn't it? Yep, it did. When did you start playing hockey? Uh, when I was four years old. That's... Uh, when I was told I put on the skates for the first time, I don't really remember it very well, but um, that's when my, my dad got me started. He was a hockey player, and my mom was a basketball player, so uh, maybe they fought it out a little bit to see what sport I was gonna play, because taller I could have played basketball, I guess, too, but. Yeah, but I'll wait, because a lot of people have asked me why you're not playing football. I did play football, too. Uh, in elementary school and in middle school, but then running became a chore for me. And a that chore, was the end of that. As in running was a punishment if we weren't practicing well for football or whatever, and how it just became work and wasn't fun anymore. You just seem like a guy that enjoyed football. Yeah, it was a lot of Smashing. fun. The games were a lot of fun. Um, the violent side of the game was a lot of fun. But, I don't know, hockey was, was where my heart was. Another guy who got pulled down to uh, Shattuck St. Mary's uh, yeah. for school in hockey, and how'd that happen? Uh, one of my good buddies that I played summer hockey with uh, went there from Maple Grove, and then uh, he went there for a year, and uh, obviously he was a good friend of mine, so we talked all the time, and he was always telling me how awesome it was, and how great of a school it was, and that was important for my parents, the education part, and then the hockey is what um, got me interested, and then... Was that good for you? Yeah, it was, I loved it there. I think about it every day. I have so many memories from Shattuck. Well, a lot of different North Dakota players have, uh, have come from Shattuck, well, all over the country, I guess, college players. How'd you end up in North Dakota then when the then recruiting visit, and what swayed you to North Dakota? I took uh, a few visits around the WCHA and then came up here and I don't know, it's, no, it's North Dakota, it just felt like me, felt like this is where I belonged. And then all of a sudden you have a relative, your cousin Danny Crystal. Yep. We always joke about it, it's fun. Been fun to have you around, thanks for doing this with us. Yeah, no problem. North Dakota defenseman Ben Blood. 
You can follow Big Ben Blood on Twitter. His numbers are rising, too. More than 700 followers. Well, the Sioux hit the road this weekend once again to Minnesota State, where the Mavericks are flying high after sweeping Minnesota. We'll ask the coach about that when we come back. Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey is sponsored by Verizon, the University of North Dakota, Shields, Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Valor Insurance, and Dahlstrom Motors. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. That is a great online course. Sioux men's basketball takes on Mayville State Tuesday, December 14th at the Betty Ingolstead Sioux Center. The action starts at 7 p.m. Get your tickets now. We are North Dakota. Welcome back to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey with head coach Dave Haxtall. I'm Tim Hennessy. Coach, you had uh, hit the road again, Minnesota State Mavericks. Uh, this is a game or a series that has been great throughout the years because it's smash mouth usually with, the, with these teams. A lot of fun things happen, and they're on a pretty good roll. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be hard-nosed, I think, like it normally is between these two programs. But we've, uh, we've had some tough series on the road in the first half. This is going to be another one, and obviously, like you said, they're, uh, they're coming off a, a real good weekend against Minnesota. Uh, they've won four in a row, so it's, uh, you know, we're hitting them when, uh, when they're hitting their stride, so we're going to have to go in and play very well. Well, the one thing that uh, sometimes has held them back a little bit is goaltending. Well, last weekend, they proved that they have that as well, don't they? Yeah, you know, they've got, uh, they've got two pretty good goaltenders, but Phil Cook was obviously very good last weekend. Uh, uh, he had, you know, 80-some shots against, and uh, not many got past him. So we're going to have to do a real good job of, uh, of getting pucks and traffic there. Obviously, that'll be a big part of our game. But uh, they're playing with speed. They're obviously playing with confidence, and they always play hard. Yeah, things happen fast there, it seems like, for some reason. It does. It's, uh, you know, it's a lively building. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's always, the joint is always jumping, it seems, when, uh, when we come to town. Uh, and they're fun games to watch normally because both programs are are playing with some speed and some tenacity, so I expect nothing different this weekend, Tim. And uh, I expect that it'll be uh, interesting to see what your lineup looks like again this weekend. Well, you know, we'll, uh, we'll get to Friday and we'll put the best uh, roster together that uh, we think can help us win games with whoever is healthy. Um, you know, it's, it's about the guys that are in the lineup. We, uh, uh, we really went in with that mindset against St. Cloud. We're going to have the same mindset as we prepare this weekend. Coach, we want to hear ole ole very much at all this week. No, we'd like to try and limit that down there as much as we can. Good luck in Mankato. Thanks, Tim. And we want to thank you for watching Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. On next week's show, we'll talk with Mike Sichi and his roundabout path to UND. That and much more on our next show. And on behalf of Coach Hackstall and the Sioux Hockey team, we thank all of our fans for watching. See you next week on Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey.